Euro Gold is driven by being the best civil engineering contractor in the Northwest, ensuring its clients are given the highest level of service that they deserve. Euro Gold work in a wide range of industry sectors, including house building, highways, commercial and industrial build. La Vita is an award-winning, independently run Italian restaurant. Located on Rose Lane in the heart of Liverpool, real Italian style dishes, using the best ingredients, skillfully prepared by our chefs. Come and try our serious Italian experience. Mulligan's Funeral and Monumental Services are a family-owned funeral service, first established by the late Brian Mulligan in 1996. We provide funeral homes in Gorton, Manchester and Reddish, Stockport, and we pride ourselves on giving a friendly and professional service to all the families who use our service. Contact us on 0161 432 0809. everyone and welcome to the show. This week we'll be meeting Mark King and he'll be telling us about his son Oliver and what happened to him in 2011 and we'll also be hearing the importance of defibrillators. Cowboy Larry will be joining us and he'll be performing his brand new song The Legend John Glenn. But first we are off to Manchester to meet Jean Louise Maguire and her multi-talented musical family. I'm Shanara. I play the fiddle, the concertina and the piano. I also sing as well and I also play classical music as well as folk and Irish. I'm Maisie Ann and I've been playing the banjo since I was six years old. I also play the mandolin, all on pipes and the whistle. My name is Shia and I also play the trumpet, the clarinet, the saxophone, the piano, the accordion, percussion. Hi, I'm Ramona and I play the harp, the baron and I also do Irish dancing as well.
Jean Louise, tell me, how did you first get interested in playing traditional Irish music? It was my dad, Martin, who first started us on the music. He bought me and my brother two accordions from Mamalox in Deansgate, and he walked us all the way from Grinelli's on Oldham Road, not far from here, and we walked all the way over the Mancunian Way to St Wilfred's in Hume every Saturday. That's how we started. Everybody who's any name now, John Joe Kelly, Grace, all the Stensons, everybody, they all went to St Wilfred's. It was a brilliant time and a brilliant time growing up. We've all sorts and clarinets and saxophones and not just Irish music, jazz going here and classical. So we've all sorts of music, really. A musical house and a dancing house. And it's been hard work and I've tried to keep them at it and it's not easy with the mother teaching them. But I think they appreciate it and hopefully they'll keep the tradition of Irish music alive. I suppose I play like the saxophone myself and the accordion and the concertina and I can play other things but never studied them and I like a lot of kind of music as well, like a lot of different things so maybe that's come out in what I show the kids. I'd say about five years I started Shannara on the fiddle and Ramona on the button accordion and Maisie Ann on the banjo and Shia on the piano accordion. Dad's from Mayo, he's from Mayo, and my mum and dad's mother, they were from Delvin in County Westmeath and from Dublin City. So we've, and mum's, all the family, I think the sisters, married about five Irish men between them. So there's a lot of Irish in the family.
thanks to my mum for teaching all of us our instruments. I hear a train coming, it's rolling round the bend. And I ain't seen the sunshine since God, I don't know when. Well, I'm stuck in false in prison, and time keeps dragging on. But the train. Well done Jean Louise for teaching your family to play so many different instruments and of course they're heavily involved in Irish dancing as well. And if you would like to book the Maguire family the details are on the screen now. We are going to take a little break and we'll see you very soon. Eurogold is driven by being the best civil engineering contractor in the Northwest, ensuring its clients are given the highest level of service that they deserve. Eurogold work in a wide range of industry sectors, including house building, highways, commercial and industrial build. Lollavita is an award-winning, independently run Italian restaurant. Located on Rose Lane in the heart of Liverpool, real Italian-style dishes, using the best ingredients, skillfully prepared by our chefs. Come and try our serious Italian experience. Mulligan's Funeral and Monumental Services are a family-owned funeral service, first established by the late Brian Mulligan in 1996. We provide funeral homes in Gorton, Manchester and Reddish, Stockport, and we pride ourselves on giving a friendly and professional service to all the families who use our service. Contact us on 0161 432 0809.
Welcome back. Now we're going to meet Mark King and Mark is going to be telling us about his son Oliver who was a very talented young footballer and was very heavily involved in sport in general. And I began by asking Mark to tell me a little bit about Oliver. Oh no, he was very, very special to us, Harold. Um, he was born in 99, January 99, and when the nurses called me, called me to him to hold him, all I wanted to do was get out of that hospital and show him off. From an early age, Harold, he was showing signs of sports. He was always having a football at his feet. And, and then from the age of four, we, we took him to uh, a local field by us here called Camp Hill. Um, he went on to have trials with Everton, Liverpool, Blackburn, Bolton, Manchester City, Man United. Um, but he was, he was wanting to sign for Everton. He broke into the Liverpool schoolboys team, um, went to Amsterdam with them and won player of the tournament. And the funny thing about it is, mad Evertonian Arlo. And um, he was down to sign for Everton. So he gets on to Liverpool schoolboys and he, he went away to Amsterdam. He uh, won the player of the tournament. But he played with his Everton under armour on and then the red Liverpool kit over. And uh, when he came back home, the Echo, who sponsored the, uh, the Liverpool schoolboys, wanted to take a photograph of him. And he wouldn't take his blue under armour off. Dad, I'm not taking this blue under armour off, letting that red shirt touch me. <laughs> you know what the kids are like? He started a school football team. He was like, Dad, we've got some good players there. Come down and coach us. They went on to win the, the, uh, the school's tournament for that year. He was just, he was just special, I love. They, um, they voted in uh, a school councillor. So he put his name forward and um, he, he won the nominations. And he's like, what have I got to do now, Dad? Well, the 2nd of March 2011 started off like a normal morning. He got up at 7 o'clock. He went and woke my other son, Ben, up. And they came into our room for what he called his family snuggle. Then about half seven, chaos. Shoes polished, share times, packed lunch done, sports bag packed, homework packed. And away we went to school. About 12 o'clock, phone call uh, from Isabel from the uh, secretary's office in the King David. And she said, Mark, Ollie's been on a swimming lesson. He's had a seizure and he's on his way to Alder Hay Children's Hospital. To be fair, I didn't know what a seizure was. I turned to the lads in work and I said, look, I know he's had a sporting accident because he was always getting into scrapes. Um, he's on his way to Alder Hay. I'll go and get him. I'll seat him to a McDonald's and I'll keep him off for the rest of the day. I wasn't prepared for the devastation that was about to unfold. So I came into the hospital grounds, went into a &E, and I said to the girls on the reception, is my Oliver here? And, and he looked at me blankly for a couple of seconds and said, no, he's on his way in in an ambulance. I said, well, I'll wait outside because I know he'll be panicking. So I went and stood outside waiting for him. And I heard the sirens going on. I'm thinking to myself, I hope that's a police car and not the ambulance. But sadly for us, it was the ambulance. He worked on our all the doctors and, and, and the uh, crash teams for two hours that day and sadly we lost them. So I started looking into why I'd lost a perfect healthy 12 year old boy with his life in front of him and, and no safer place than school and I was horrified to read that we lose between 12 and 19 young lives per week across our country to SADS or sudden arithmetic death syndrome with your electrical side of your heart just switches off like a light switch. So as a family and as a dad, I wasn't prepared to sit back knowing that other families are gonna go through what we've been through. So we, got, we founded the Oliver King Foundation and we launched in February 2012. So we never sat about, we just knew what we had to do. We got our um, charity status. We're, we had a small team of six um, and, and the, the achievements that we've done is, is unbelievable. We've got three main aims in the foundation and the first one is to bring awareness out of this condition because not a lot of people know what you're talking about. The second one was by the time uh, Oliver was 21, we'd have it legislated that whenever you see a fire extinguisher in a public building, a defib would be beside it. And the uh, relevance amongst the people, awareness trained in the use of that defib. People go, oh yeah, they talk to you and they tell you what to do and all that. But if you put yourself in a scenario, you'd be like, oh, unless you knew what you were doing. So this is why we train the staff as well. Um, and the third one was that by the time the kids reach 14, like most countries, they'll go and have a 12-pad ECG test to test the hearts. 
to make sure that everything's okay and they can do sports. So we wrote to David Cameron and we said, listen, Mr Cameron, this has got to change. You've got to legislate this law. It never cost you a penny to legislate the fire extinguisher law. And what, what, what did he say in the fire? Get out. If someone has a cardiac arrest in your office, workplace or school, the shout is different, it's get in. David Cameron wrote back to us and said, look, if you want us to have a debate in Parliament where the MPs vote, go and get me 100,000 signatures on an e-petition. But in the end, we finished with 160,000 on the e-petition. So because we still run football teams here in Liverpool, I put a shout out for all the parents to bring all their old shoes and football boots. And we laid a pair of shoes out, each representing a life lost that year. It will bring the enormity home of how many people we lose each week across our country. As the Oliver King Foundation, as a small team of six, we put over 6,000 defibrillators up and down the country. I've been as far north as Stornoway and as far south as Portsmouth, delivering and training people into the use of them. We've worked tirelessly for 10 years to get a full legislation. Now it's hard to get a full legislation. And the government said to us, and a Subri it was actually, she's become a real good friend of ours now. And she's opened so many doors for us in Parliament. We've got 250 cross-party MPs supporting this. It's not rocket science. So you've got your defib, you've come to the, to the area where the, uh, the casualty is, and you open your lid, okay? That's your cover open. Then you click this, and you're open. As soon as you're open, it'll talk to you. Adult mode. So you've got your prep kit here with your scissors in, your face mask, your gloves, your wipes. You take your scissors, and you cut the cords pull off the chest. To reveal pads. So you pull your handle, you put Look your pads on. Pictures on pads. It'll tell you to stand back. Apply pads to bare skin. This exactly light will flash. As shown in the pictures. And that's you sending your, your first shock in. If your patient doesn't come round after the first shock, you carry on with your CPR. That will reevaluate the patient again in two minutes' time. You know, there was, uh, we saved one life, and it was a roofer. He was on a flat roof on a hot day. His mate had a cardiac arrest. He shouted. Down, he got on the phone to the ambulance. The ambulance told him where there was a defib. He got hold of the defib, came back. He was doing CPR for 20 minutes on his mate. He'd give him like four shocks and, and save his life. And I know that recently he supplied a new defibrillator to the Birmingham Irish Association, which are great friends of ours. We trained the staff and uh, we stayed for about an hour just chatting afterwards. And they were so friendly. And, um, and they said they get, get hold of yourself, Martin, and um, they, they made contact with you and, and, and true to the word you're here today. They can get uh, to us on, on the Oliver King Foundation website, info at theoliverkingfoundation.co.uk. We're on Facebook, we're on Twitter. They can pick us up on any of them three networks. 82 people will have a cardiac arrest today. Eight will survive. That was a terrible shock what happened to Mark and all his family on losing their lovely son, Oliver. And I would encourage every organisation to please try and have a defibrillator. It's really very, very important. Now, John Glynn has been entertaining us for many, many years. He's made so many hit records and, of course, we've all enjoyed him performing here in the UK. Well, now a song has been written about him and Cowboy Larry is going to perform it here for us tonight. It's called The Legend. John Glenn. We are blessed with many singers all across this dear land. The stars of country music and all the big show bands. I sing of a great one who hails from the town of Cross McGlen. He's up there with the very best, our very own John Glenn. John grew up a farmer's son, living in a homestead on the hill. Close to the lake called Lockrocks, where the water's always still. And the first song he recorded, a big hit now everybody knows, was the sunny side of the mountain, where the rippling waters flow. From humble beginnings, his career took off in a big, big way With the mainliners and wranglers They took him far away Wherever life took him And wherever he did roam To the gentleman of country 
Rothkillen is his home. For many, many years now, John remains at the top. And with all our country legends, their fame will never stop. You'll hear of new singing stars every now and then. But the people throughout this land still love John Glenn. God bless one of our best friends. The legend, John Glenn. We hope you've all enjoyed that great song about the legend John Glenn. And well done to Cowboy Larry for performing it so well. Now that brings us to the end of the show for this week. Henry McGlade is back with us next Thursday night at 7 o'clock with his show from County Mayo. And we are here as usual at 7.30. Until then, thank you all for watching. <laughs>